Well, we're going to start with number 9. Uh, number 9 it wants us to find the limit as x approaches 2 of t squared, 2 cubed, minus 8, over t minus 2. The only reason we need to use any of the techniques that we know, learn in this section is because why we try to put 2 in here. 2 minus 2 is 0 in the denominator. 0 in the denominator is not OK. It's just not OK. Uh, so what do we do about it? We're going to try and cancel some stuff out. Really, that's that's really what's behind all of these techniques. Uh, and for this one, it seems to be as simple as just factoring the numerator. The thing about the numerator that you have to remember, it's a difference of cubes. This is t cubed. This is 2 cubed. So the way that that factors is t minus 2 times t squared plus 2t plus 2 squared, which is 4, over t minus 2. What do you know? t minus 2 cancels with t minus 2. And in the interest of space and time, the time-space continuum, we'll just leave what it looks like right here. We'll just understand that these are crossed out. So now we have this new function that we're going to find the limit of, and it's going to be the same as the limit of the function, this function, before we cancel anything out. So we get to just put 2 in here. So uh, 2 squared plus 2 times, now we get to put 2 in there. That's a 2 plus 4. So that's 3 times 4. That's 12. So that's the limit. The limit is 12. How handy. And now we'll do 13. We want the limit as x approaches negative 1 of x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2 over x cubed plus 4x squared minus x minus 4. Alright, so if we try to put negative 1 in here, we will quickly find, uh, or maybe a little longer than quickly, we'll find that we get a 0 in the denominator, which we can't have. So we're going to try and factor this and have stuff cancel. So let me, as x approaches negative 1. So what we're going to do is we have uh, four terms, which maybe, hopefully you remember, grouping them together. I'm not going to use parentheses. That can get confusing. We're going to group these things together and factor them in groups by the, th the factors that they have in common. This little group here has an x squared in common. So we'll factor out an x squared. What's left? x plus 2 is left. x plus 2 when you factor out an x squared. This one here, we, we would like the, the x to be a positive. So let's factor out a negative 1. And we'll again get x plus 2 down here. This group has also an x squared in common. And we get x plus 4. Again, we'll make this x positive, so we'll factor out a negative 1. We get x plus 4 again. And this group, uh, th or this term here, has an x plus 2 factor, and this has an x plus 2 factor. So we'll factor out that x plus 2 from both of those, just like we factored out the x squared from these two. Uh, and when we factor the x plus 2 from here, we get x squared left. Factor the x plus 2, we're left with a negative 1. And here we have an x plus 4 factor in common, so we can factor that out of both. And we get x squared minus 1. And we can see there's that factor right there that was causing the problem. When we plug a negative 1 in here, we'll get positive 1. When we subtract 1, we get 0. So what we love about this method is that we get to cancel those out. The fact that this limit is the same as this limit, even though the functions themselves are not exactly the same, their limits are the same. So now, we can put negative 1 in there. So negative 1 plus 2 over negative 1 plus 4. That's 1 over 3, 1 third. That's our limit. The limit as x approaches negative 1 of this big old mess is 1 over 3. And now we'll do number 19. We'll do a one with the square roots, the rationalizing method. 
really both of these methods are the dividing out method. We want we want to mess around with this thing until we can get something to cancel out. Because the thing is, there's a factor in the denominator, or something there, a factor in the denominator that's uh, causing an issue. It's getting a zero, and we want to we want to be able to cancel that piece out so that the rest of it is just a number. It's not zero. So when we go to put negative 3 in here, negative 3 plus 3 is 0. In the denominator, we can't have that. So if you watch the intro, you'll, you'll know there's some payoff for this, but it is a weird thing to do. And I don't know how long it took, maybe, Newton or Leibniz to figure out that they should multiply both things by the conjugate of the numerator, but they did, and we thank them for it today. Because what happens is square root of x plus 7 times the square root of x plus 7 is just x plus 7. We get a 2 times the square root, a negative 2 times the square root, they're going to cancel each other out. And we just get a negative 2 times 2, so that's negative 4 over. Uh, let me just make sure I got that right. Four. Yeah. And in the denominator, we get x plus 3 times the square root of x plus 7 plus 2. All right. And this together, now I'm just going to rewrite this where it sits. 7 minus 4 is 3, so x plus 3. we got a factor of x plus 3 and a factor of x plus 3. So they cancel out. And now we're left with an equivalent limit, the limit as x approaches negative 3 of 1 over the square root of x plus 7 plus 2. So now what happens when we put negative 3 in there? 7 minus 3 is going to be 4. The square root of 4 is 2. And 2 plus 2 is 4. So the limit is 1 over 4. So that is the rationalizing method. Now we'll look at some different quotients. Look at two difference quotients. First, for 69. The difference quotient for f of x equals 3x minus 1. Remember, the difference quotient, this is your memory in this little cloud that hovers above your head. The difference quotient is f of x plus h uh, plus f of x, or minus, sorry, minus f of x over h. So we need f of x plus h. That means x plus h goes in here for x. Uh, minus just plain old f of x over h. And we want to find the limit of that quotient as h goes to 0. So f of x plus h, we're just going to replace x with x plus h. Okay, So this is f of x plus h minus f of x. And we can see f of x is just that thing right there over h. And when we try to let h go to 0, that's going to happen with a difference quotient every single time. Because that's what we want is h to be 0, but you can't just substitute it directly because you get divided by 0. And that can't be. So we're going to work this all out. We've got 3x plus 3h minus 1 minus 3x plus 1 all over h. Let's cross some things out. It's positive 3x and negative 3x. Negative 1 and positive 1. They all cancel each other out. What's left? 3h. The limit as h approaches 0 of 3h. Uh, what happens when you plug 0 in for h? It just turns into a 0. 3 times 0 would be 0. So the limit would be 0. Okay. Um, undo. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 3h over h now. And the h's cancel, so this is now the limit as h approaches 0 of 3. What happens when you plug h in here? Well, there's no h to put it in. What do I do? You just, it doesn't, nothing happens. It's just 3. It's always 3. This function is always 3, and 
plugging something in for h where h doesn't exist doesn't change that, so there you go. And that's one of the properties of limits. The limit of a constant is just that constant. Uh, no matter what you do to it, it always is 3. And now, our last problem and the second difference quotient will be 72 f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 2. And remembering again, really quickly, f of x plus h minus f of x over h is the difference quotient. So, the limit as h approaches 0 uh, of the difference quotient for this function, that means we're going to put x plus h in for x, so we're going to get the square root of x plus h minus 2. That looks just like f of x, except for we get an x plus h instead of x. Minus the square root of x minus 2 over h. So what do we do about this? Now we have these square roots in here, and it doesn't really work out as nicely as the last function to uh, just multiply everything out and stuff subtracts away. That would be wonderful, but it doesn't happen this time right away. So with the square roots, let's try multiplying by the conjugate. x plus h minus 2 mi or plus, now that's the conjugate, of x minus 2 uh, plus the square root of x minus 2 and in the denominator as well. The square root x plus h minus 2 plus the square root of x minus 2. All right, we're moving along now. The limit as h approaches 0. Uh, so when we, we do all this, something really nice happens. The square root times this identical square root, the square roots cancel each other, and x plus h minus 2 emerges. Uh, then when we go to multiply the outside and the insides together, we'll get these identical things, only they'll be opposites of each other and they would cancel each other out. So now we move on to this guy times this guy. And it's a negative one of those times a positive one of those, so we'll get a negative, and the square roots will cancel each other out because the, uh, the radicand is identical. x minus 2 is the same as x minus 2. So x minus 2 there over h times this big mess, x plus h minus 2 minus the square root of x minus 2. Let's see if anything amazing happens as we keep working with this. We get x minus x. So you know those are going to cancel each other out. We got negative 2, and then we got a negative times a negative. That's a positive 2. So negative 2 plus 2, those guys are going to cancel each other out. And we're left with just an h. So just an h is left. We have h over h times the square root of x plus h minus 2 minus the square root of x minus 2. And we can see these guys cancel each other out. And so we just have the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over that original conjugate we used, x plus h minus 2 plus the square root of x minus 2. So what happens is h goes to 0. Let's see. Um, as h goes to 0, we get x plus 0. Uh, so that's just x. x minus 2, and h isn't here, so we have 1 over an x plus h, or the square root of x minus 2, and the square root of x minus 2, that's 2 of those. 2 times the square root of x minus 2. So there you go. That's that limit of that difference quotient. A little complicated, but there you go. Uh, I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.